as an angel investor, or if you're going to try to be more formal about it and be an early stage venture capitalist, nothing ever freaking happens as fast as you think it's going to happen. Okay. Whether it's COVID coming out of a clear blue sky that slows all the fundraising down or more recently, money's not free anymore. It's not cheap anymore. Interest rates are up. Go talk to some founders that are raising money right now and ask them about that environment versus four months ago. And, um, you know, the, it's crazy. <laughs> here's, here's one of them. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, it's funny. It's like, it's almost like, it's almost like entertainment where they, you know, big thing for us is in, even raising. It's like, hurry up and wait. Years ago, I bought a Mercedes ML430. That was the SUV, you know, kind of like that soccer mom car. But this was like in 2002 before they were full-blown soccer mom status. Anyway, I remember buying this thing and could barely afford it. This was back when you could get interest-only mortgages with barely any money down over a 40-year amortization schedule on that house of your dreams as well. Look at me, look at me. I got this big house and this Mercedes SUV. I am rich, brother. The reality was I made like 120 grand at the time. And yeah, I had a little bit of a side hustle, but it was dying, involved nightclub shit that I did in college. But here I was, 25 years old, living in the biggest, best neighborhood in my middle-class town. All my neighbors were established, 40s and 50-year-olds with careers that deserve to live there. But hey, I got a Mercedes and I bought this house, though. I belong. Boom, baby. I'll never forget the time my lawnmower broke and I went to ask all my neighbors if I could borrow theirs. Well, uh, the reality check came crashing down on me when I discovered that not one neighbor would lend me their lawnmower. Not one. It wasn't because they didn't like me or, or thought they were better than me. It was because they didn't own one. I was the only asshole in an $800,000 house with a Mercedes that had the mower's own lawn. This was back in 2002, remember? Things worked out for me because I bet the calm on myself with these moves and never had a home foreclosure or bankruptcy or anything else. I elevated my game to find ways to afford all that shit. From that standpoint, yeah, maybe this was a good thing. The house, maybe, but not that damn Mercedes. That was a dumb ass decision. Years later to present time, I have recently come up with a metaphor I am using in my life that ties back to that Mercedes. See, it wasn't just the monthly payment that was the issue. It was that the gas mileage was terrible as well. I'm talking like maybe eight miles per gallon or so. I would literally see the freaking gas dial move downward while I was driving. I would rub my eyes and blink. No bullshit. The thing actually moved down as I drove. This car was bringing me down, way down. I had to get rid of it. I've started to identify people in my life that drain my fuel. People that are are either a bad influence or people that are constantly full of non-constructive pieces of criticism or just generally unhappy, specifically to me, my kids, or things I'm trying to do with my life, or maybe even things that I've done with my life. If I identify a person doing this on a consistent basis, I don't care what our relationship is. I am going to treat them like my Mercedes and trade them in, even if I am temporarily upside down on that damn trade-in. So what? I'll deal with it. I can't have them continuing to suck all the gas out of me in the future. It's better to be lonely than hang out with people that suck. If it's a family member or a childhood friend, they may not even know what's happening. I'll keep them in the mix, but they will not be driven much, and there won't be much emphasis put on anything that comes out of their mouths. I'll still sit in the car every once in a while and play some old classic rock on the radio and kick it with them. But anything serious, nah, their opinion will not matter. If it's someone that I do not have a long-term history with, (laughs) they will be eliminated from my life completely, and they'll know it. It is what it is. I do try to approach things very objectively and put myself in their shoes. 
David Meltzer was a past guest on the show and referenced, hey, if someone you thought you were close to offends you by not including you in something they are doing, ask yourself, what are you putting off to have them make that decision about you? I think that's sound advice. Believe me, I kicked the tires. I did the math. I considered all aspects and all options before I traded in that ML430. Sometimes difficult decisions just need to be made. Now, I transition to today's guest on the show. Ryan Rotman has become one of my closer friends the last three years and is definitely not sucking the fuel out of me. In fact, maybe you can argue his presence in my life has raised my octane rating. We met because of a company he founded with a future Hall of Famer and quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, um, Aaron Rodgers. We will get into that company quite a bit, but Ryan's resume of interesting shit goes much deeper than that, including acting, producing, and even owning part of a very popular bar in West Hollywood. Not to mention he's a scratch golfer, and I have no idea how golf, I hate golf, keeps making its way onto my show. This is the third time now. I now welcome, and, and, and you're going to know from this intro that Ryan did not write it himself, okay? You're going to know from this intro I'm about to give. Oh, I welcome boy. to the show an entrepreneur, he might have said that, a visionary, a well-connected L.A. socialite, a Hallmark Christmas movie extraordinaire, a noteworthy celebrity dater, an unintended, indirect victim of Kevin Spacey's career-ending decisions, but most importantly, a very close friend. Welcome to 2000% Raise, Ryan Rabin. You read exactly what I wrote for you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and please don't trade me in like your Mercedes ML430. Thank you for having me. I, th I think we need to clarify this Im immediately since I brought up uh, uh, Kevin Spacey. And I, and I think in yeah. that clarification, not, not only is it an interesting freaking story, Ryan, you, you, you told this to me the first time we met, by the way. Um, you, you, you were talking about your acting career and you had mentioned some things you had been in and, uh, and you, you kind of had your big break and could you kind of, kind of describe what happened there when you're, you're about to be in a blockbuster movie, right? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, I'd done TV for a long time and this was kind of my, my breakout movie. A lot of the, uh, my peers and, you know, friends in, in Hollywood all kind of went out for this, this movie and, uh, I was fortunate enough to, to get it. And uh, I was like, hell yeah, this is my big break. Finally, I get this movie where it's, you know, it's me and Taron Egerton, um, who's a big star, and Ansel Elgort, um, Kevin Spacey, Emma Roberts, Suki Waterhouse, Tom Cockrell, Jeremy Irvine. Um, like, the list just goes on. I was like, ah, this is it. And it's, it's about one of my, you know, one of my favorite directors, writers. Um, and it's about the Billionaire Boys Club which is a group in the 1980s in Hollywood that just kind of was one of the first uh, Ponzi schemes and ended up killing some people and going to jail. But uh, it was a really cool story. It was something that I wanted to tell and, and uh, I got it. And we shot in New Orleans for like four months. These guys all became my brothers filming it, which was fantastic. Uh, and we were about to premiere. We had a big premiere set and about three weeks before is when the Kevin Spacey stuff came out and obviously a movie called billionaire boys club and Kevin Spacey <laughs> really don't go well together. So they ended up, they ended up scrapping the premiere, holding the movie back in that time. They kept editing it. Uh, you know, the movie was not, it's not great. And it's not bad. I, mean, I enjoyed it, but you know, <laughs> sayonara, big break. You know, I think in the stars <laughs> buying it or show, I think Showtime ended up buying it. So we didn't get that, that premiere. I didn't get the notoriety that I, I thought was going to come with it. Uh, it was probably a hell of a good, I mean, it was a hell of a good time. It was one of the best experiences I've ever had on a set. Those guys are still my brothers to this day. Um, not Kevin Spacey, but the other guys. Uh, but yeah, we definitely <laughs> had, you know, <laughs> we definitely had some Kevin Spacey stories on that. That's so Los Angeles. Everybody like distance them, themselves so like quickly. Oh, not Kevin Spacey. I don't know. You know. Yeah, no, it's yeah. listen. I mean, he would fantastic. Like, I learned so much from watching that guy act. Like, he gets on set, he's professional, you know, he knows what the fuck he's doing. Like, you, you, you know, watch him and everything he's done. He's, he's one of the best actors of our generation. You know, he just, he just was 
you know, but you take the camera off and he, we definitely had some, some stories that, uh, you know, I'll tell you off air, but, um, <laughs> you, you were not but, shocked by the, you're not shocked by the allegations. It, it didn't. Yeah. It didn't hit me. And I was like, you know what? I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll get off that subject, but I got to tell you, man, during, during the whole Me Too movement, when, when Kevin Spacey hit, it was just, that was kind of like when it seemed like one person after another every other day, day was falling. And, and I'm sorry yeah. you were uh, you know, an unintended uh, victim in, in him coming down because um, I, I, the, the trailers were out for that movie and everything. It was supposed to be a big deal. And then, <laughs> and then no yeah, it, 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 it up. <laughs> It's crazy though, if you think about it, like, you know, this the cancel culture and everything is of how, how many other people it affects, right? Like it was well founded of what he did and, you know, everything that happened to him should have happened to him. And, uh, uh, but you just don't think of like, okay, well that happened. Then, you know, our movie didn't get the break. All the people that put their heart and soul into this thing. Like one person can affect so many different people, um, by their actions. You just, you know, you, and then that was a big thing for me of, of seeing that. So it was really interesting seeing just that aspect. You know, there was a movie in the 90s. I'm sure you know it, Ryan, but for our, for our audience, um, Kevin Spacey was in a movie that I loved him in. It's in probably about my, my, not my top five, but maybe like my top 20 of all time, American Beauty. And if you look what Kevin Spacey happened to him in real life and then watch American Beauty, it's almost a little bit scary, yeah. the, uh, the yeah. connection. Art imitating, art imitating life. Yeah, too extreme. Exactly. exactly. Except it was, a, I think that it was a female in that one. <laughs> It was a female, but they were yeah. both underage. There was both, you know, I don't know. It just, it seemed. I heard that's how he got him back to his house. Is he like, hey, you know, he put like a bag floating in the air and take a video of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, man. So I don't want to, I don't spend the whole time. You, you got so much inter interesting stuff to share, man. And I want to share a couple of uh, my stories that I've experienced with you because I really appreciate uh appreciate our friendship. And I know my audience knows and people that were following my social media prior to prior to this podcast knows I've been spending out a lot of, a lot of time out in Los Angeles. And, you know, before I was doing that, I was just hundred percent in Chicago and, you know, <laughs> Ryan, the, might the be, sausage, the sausage King of Chicago. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hey, pro we, man. We, hey man, listen, we, we, we've talked about Portillo's on this show before and I'll, and I'll do it again if we need to. All right. <laughs> um, Ryan understates his, you know, he, he's now in entrepreneur mode, which we're going to spend a lot of time on the show. He's come up with an awesome, awesome idea, which, which we'll be sharing that, that he brought Aaron into, like I mentioned, but he kind of understates his, um, you know, his, his career a little bit, not understates it, but he's, he's not around there screaming on the top of the mountains of it. I guess the word I'm looking for is modest, you know, Ryan, you were, you were, um, with a group of my friends from Chicago at some point last year. And yep. it was, it was, uh, my birthday and, uh, they didn't have any idea, you know, cause you're not talking about it, you know, being in the movies and all this shit. And I'll, and I'll never forget it. Two weeks later, I get a text from one of my friends. He took a picture, him and his girlfriend are watching a Hallmark Christmas movie. Oh, yeah. and he goes, weren't, we just, weren't we just with this guy in the Bahamas? <laughs> I, go, yeah. I, go, I didn't know he was an, I didn't know he was an actor. I go, dude, what do you think he does? Um, anyway, you know, <laughs> maybe give our audience a little bit of, uh, you, you know, you have some no notoriety. People know you on Hallmark and they keep calling, calling you back. You know, I, you didn't get that big break with Billionaire Boys Club, but to get consistent work from an organization like Hallmark, I got to think is still a nice uh, feather in the cap. Yeah, I mean, you guys you can say I'm a pretty bad self promoter. Um, yeah, you know, I, I I really like to listen and I love learning about other people as opposed to talking about myself because I already know about myself. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, you know, put the the time in. I moved out to LA like 18 years ago. Um, you know, when I first got here, I definitely got that LA bug of just uh, you know being able to get into clubs uh in parting with you know the who's who back then there was no cell phones you know as far as cameras and instagram and all that stuff so you could actually like go out and have a hell of a time with the, with everyone and uh you know it was it was like kind of vegas what happens in vegas stays in vegas like no one knew yeah. Yeah. and they got sucked into that world for the first two years i was here nothing really you know happened you just get in that world and you're like oh i'm in this world it'll happen because i'm in a world and like no, it doesn't happen like that. You know, obviously networking and knowing people in LA is a huge thing, but you also got to put the work into it. I did like a show called Victorious and I was kind of the king of uh, two seasoners. So we either, I was in a, every pilot I booked, we do a season or two seasons and then it would usually get canceled. So I was kind of the king of that. Uh, you know, <laughs> what, what's it, it called? The, the king of what? The king of two seasons? Did you say? Two, yeah. King of two seasons. Yeah. 
uh, <laughs> could never can never get more than that. Or I'd come into yeah. like you know nine hundred two and zero in season three, and I did like you know three four, and then we got canceled the fifth season. And that was the nine. That was the nine hundred two and zero. The the remake, right? Yeah, the remake. The one that was on the CW. Yeah, yeah. And then you yeah. made history on that show, didn't you? Weren't you the first? Yeah, we had, uh, we're the first one of the first gay marriages on TV. So I played the gay guy on the show, uh, and my character was Shane, and Teddy got married, which was a really cool thing. Uh, you know, it was actually one of my prouder roles I've ever done because, you know, it. <laughs> The character itself was was fun, but how many people reached out to me after that and just uh, said how how much it helped them in their own lives coming out or talking to their parents or hitting on oh, key really? subjects about about being gay and um, making that transition into telling people like how much that watching us go through that meant to them and helped them in their lives. So that was one of the the roles that actually sticks with me the um, the hardest is just how it affected people. And listening to yeah. those stories was meant, meant a lot to me. So I was very fortunate to be able to, to do that and hopefully help some people. And because of that, now I own a you know I own a, a gay sports bar in, in West Hollywood and a club called Heart across the street, which is uh, one of my buddies. And actually, I modeled my character on Nine Hundred Two and Zero after a good friend, Lance Bass from Insync. So he's been a friend of mine since you know almost since I moved here, and just the nicest nicest guy. But very. Yep. Un- unassuming and and uh so i modeled my character after that and because of that you know we used to go to a bar down the street our local sports bar called rocco's and uh they opened a spot in west hollywood and asked if lance and i would want to be involved mm-hmm. and so we got involved in it and it's just taken off it's just nice it's perfect i mean sunset in santa monica like great location indoor outdoor and it did so well we opened a club like a ten thousand square foot club across the street called heart you know an area that used to, a place that used to be called rage which was all the rage back in the day um, so it led to a lot of, lot, a lot of opportunities for me. And on top of, like I said, the, the cool things that it did for people. <laughs> so, so I, I want to, I want to clarify something here. Not, not that it needs clarification or, or if it matters, but, but it's, it's kind of just funny because when I first talked to Ryan on the phone, he's talking about this company. I, we, I came in as an investor and it was an investor pitch and we're talking over the phone. I'm in Chicago, it's over zoom and, I'm uh, I'm Googling him as we're talking, and I and I see this show Victorious, Victoria Justice um, pops up that that he was on that show, like Ryan just mentioned, and I happened to mention that my daughter was a big fan of that show. Hey, dude, that's pretty cool, man. You should lead with that. You know, I got a teenage daughter; she used to watch that when she was, you know, blah 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 blah. And then I go, she loved that show, and she used to love High School Musical. And then Ryan goes, well, Zach Efron from High School Musical and from a bunch of shit now is, is one of my is one of my better friends. And now I'm sitting there thinking to myself, all right, this dude says he's business partners with Aaron Rodgers, says he's friends with Zach Efron. I, I, I don't know. This sounds like some L.A. Uh, L.A. L.A. stories here. So, um, you know, I, I, every word he said was obviously true, but I, I, I'll well, never we, forget it. You've hung out all of them now. Well, so exactly. So one of my good friends is a cat that I went to high school with just as randomly a casting director in Hollywood. And he's been there for years. His name's Chadwick Strzok. And uh, he's kind of like my person to verify things. Yeah, Ryan's met him. And I call him up and I go, hey, man, I got this guy. I'm, you know, I'm doing this venture capital stuff. And he says he's friends with Aaron Rodgers and Zach Afron. This doesn't sound like it should be all. And then Chad looks you up on IMDb and <laughs> He's like totally plausible, totally plausible. They're probably all friends. They're both hanging out. So anyway, I flew out to LA and met with Ryan, and sure enough, um, Zach and some other people were out with us, and we we had a great time. But yeah. um, you know, why don't we use that as a segue, Ryan? I I, I use that actually to bring up IMDb. You know, Ryan, maybe give it a, give it a couple sentences. What I what I am doing. Essentially, it's like the it's the go to for the entertainment business as far as like you know, anytime you Google an actor or you watch a movie and you're like, who is that guy? What's he been in? Um, IMDb essentially will come up, right? It shows you, if you look up Ryan Rotman on IMDb, it shows you all my uh, credits, anything I've produced, acted in, what I have upcoming, uh, like a bio about me, photo gallery, clips of the shows that I've been in. Um, it's like a one-stop shop for the for the entertainment world, right? And my guess is going to be, because it's no joke that everybody thinks everyone in LA is just, you know, full of crap, right? That That at some point, probably in the 90s, you know, so and so said he was in this movie. So and so said he was in this commercial. IMDb verifies that everything. It was probably born out of peeling through the bullshit everyone feeds each other. I would imagine. Yeah, you can definitely you can definitely sift sift through the bullshit of LA, right? Like 
you know, nope. it's hard. It's hard. Everyone's like, I'm a, I'm an actor. I'm like, well, are you a working actor? Or are you an actor? Right. Are you, are you bartending right. or are you actually like making a living right. doing the, yep. the, doing the acting thing? Cause there's a huge difference. Right. And, you know, I think like 1% of all people that live in LA are actually like making a living doing acting. Uh, you know, and everyone else it's, you know, it's, not their main job. It's their kind of side hustle, I guess. So IMDb is the essential where you can like, every time I walk in an audition, right? Like usually the casting director has opened my IMDb, right? Just to yep. see the, they see so many people, at least they can pull it up and see everything I've done. Maybe they've known someone that was in it and strikes up a conversation, but that's, that's what it is. It's just, it's my business card as an actor, uh, you know, as a producer, it helps me find other talent, other producers, other directors, writers, um, and, and then, and also see who represents them. Right. So if, a producer is trying to get a hold of me, like if I'm at a Hallmark, I'm trying to say, hey, we want to get Ryan again, who represents him. They can go to IMDb and see who my agent, manager um, are and contact them to get a hold of me. You know, and, and because of that, I'm a sports nut, uh, I'm a huge sports nut, and was always so curious why something like that didn't exist in the sports world, which is baffling to me, right? Just even a one stop shop, right? We're like, if you go to ESPN, you get, you know, currencies and stats and a little information about the player. Um, and everything's just about who they are on the field, nothing about who they are off the field, uh, you know, and still to get rounded, uh, glimpse of an, of an athlete, you have to go four or five different websites. Um, so you have four or five tabs open on your, on your web, on your computer and clicking back and forth. So I wanted to set out to create, to solve that problem and create a one-stop shop for all things sports, right? Where you don't have to go to four or five different sites. You go to one, uh, one site and you can get all the information you need. Well, for the longest time, I've had that idea. A, I didn't have, you know, I did fine for myself acting, but I didn't have the capital to, to go out and, and make this thing since, you know, building a website of this magnitude is not cheap, uh, which you, you can verify now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've and I, seen and it. I'm it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's expensive. It's really yeah. expensive. Uh, and on top of that, too, like getting into that world is difficult. Like I knew a bunch, I knew some athletes, but. I really needed someone that could solidify it, um, you know, and add some grab toss to it. So I'd been friends with Aaron for a while, but you know, we were that we were friends, played golf together, hung out, you know, he's a, he's a fantastic guy. He lives in LA in the off season. So we had a bunch of mutual friends. We ended up doing a lot together and, uh, they, him and another partner, Nate Raby, they're very, very close as well. We've all become, you know, three very close friends had this movie that they were trying to sell um, and asked if I would come in and help. It was a great package. It was Aaron, Nate, Desmond Howard, uh, Abram Booty. He's like football royalty, you know, and uh, this, we're having trouble, brought me on board. We ended up selling it to Amazon a couple weeks later. We put a really good package together. Yeah, which was great. And because of that, you know, when we got it done so quickly that, you know, built some trust with him as far as that I knew what I was doing on business wise and I could get shit done. And, uh, you know, it's one of those fortuitous moments where him and our, myself and him and our other buddy, Paul Corey, who you've met, you know, with Ashley Green, who you're part of their company as well. We're supposed to go to dinner and Paul had to cancel last minute. So Aaron and I just went and thank, thankfully, I love you, Paul, but I'm glad you didn't go. And so we went, we went to Casa Vega and had dinner and it's a really good Mexican restaurant here in LA. And, um, I just kind of, I wasn't even pitching him like to be a part of it. I was just asking his, his thought. I'm like, Hey, I had this idea for a one-stop shop, like an IMDb of sports. Is it something you as an athlete would utilize? We, I kind of dove into a little bit of what I was trying to accomplish. And, you know, and he said, who have you told? I was like a couple of buddies. And he's like, well, don't tell anyone else. Let's do it. And, you know, nice. I love him to death. He's got a great sense of humor, very dry. And I thought he was, I thought he was fucking with me. And I was like, <laughs> all right. He's like, I'm serious. And sure enough, the next day we like got cracking on it. And I woke up and I was like, this is amazing. And then I was like, oh, shit. How do I build a website? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, and trials and tribulations and then, uh, all that. We, we finally ended up with a product. But, you know, it was not an easy task to get there. There was a lot of days I was like, I don't like, is this going to happen? Um, but he had the, you know, listen, he, he liked the idea. And essentially what we built is OSDB, which is, one stop shop for all things sports where you can literally learn about everything about the athlete on and off the field, which I think is really cool. Where, you know, the more a fan knows about an athlete, the bigger fan they become. And these guys are doing so many amazing things off the field. Uh, you know, you, you see guys like LeBron and, and, and Aaron, they have so many 
different investments, companies they've built, and oh, yeah. almost making more money off that than they are in their sports. Um, yeah, yeah. Derek Jeter did a ton of that. Derek Jeter, yep. Yeah, exactly. And Derek Jeter's a bunch of shit besides that, too. But it's just like, you know, it's the superstars doing it right. And they're, they're the ones leading by example. And you get that next tier, that second or third tier of guys, even even former players that don't have that kind of money are still seeing this example from the LeBrons and Aaron's of the world <laughs> of the world. But like there's thousands of them. There's like yeah, six yeah, maybe yeah. They're in that category. They're doing some amazing things where we really try and highlight all those where you can go on Aaron's page and you can see the charities he's involved with. Uh, his bio, all his social handles, his nickname, all his endorsement deals, the business ventures he's associated with or involved in, um, his contract details. And then on top of that, you can see who is, who is, if you are a brand or a company or an agent looking to get a hold of him, you can see who his agent manager PR team are. Um, and the cool thing that Aaron really brought, you know, for the very beginning was, you know, Aaron's like, listen, there's a few of those kind of guys that you can just find anything out you want about them. But the other 99% of athletes, are still doing a lot of amazing things. It's though mm-hmm. it's that those are the guys that we're really building this for. We can bring them new deal flow, right? If a brand can't get a hold, of, you know, can't get Aaron, maybe they can get, you know, uh, Lazard, or you know, it just even click on Athletes First, and if they can't get Aaron, who other who else does Athletes First have that they can um, get involved with? And and also maybe the charities align, so that's another person, another you know, plus in their category of why they would want them. Um, and we can we provide that we provide that information, which is really cool. And like you know, you're saying there's a six guys. Someone that really struck to me that I always point out is is uh, is Thaddeus Young, the NBA player. Like I think he's got 99 investments. He's wow. crushing the game in investments. Like yep. it, it's just cool. Like I never knew. I'm a big fan of his. I never know he was such a business, yeah. so business savvy and such a businessman. Uh, right. Cole Beasley has a rap album like called the uh, yep. the autobiography. Like a lot of these guys are doing cool shit. I, I'm in a deal with uh, Mason Plumley right now, the basketball player, and a, a lot of the other NBA players look at him, even though he's not, you know, that top tier guy. He's I was good, obviously, but you know, he's not like LeBron status, right? But people look at him for investment advice because he's made that name for himself around the league. It's pretty cool. Yep, it's it's really cool, and it, I think it's cool to highlight that. What attracted to me to to really like make the concept hit home for everyone, right? You know, Ryan could sit here right now and tell you. You know, he was uh, an extra as one of the kids in um, The Sixth Sense. You know, he was that kid in the background. Okay. I saw dead people, too. (laughs) Let's Let's go to IMDb right now. It'll be on his IMDb if he was. Now, I could sit here and tell you. You know, I was, uh, I made it to the, uh, through the Cowboys mini camp and was on the squad the first four games of uh, 2001 you don't know there, there's nowhere to go find this information yeah. so once once osdb gets full throttle it's going to be bringing all mm-hmm. of that to the table in addition to everything else ryan was saying which which is really amazing and i gotta tell you you know we, we always make it clear that we're not soliciting anyone on the show this is you know making people aware of different entrepreneurs whether i'm involved or whether i'm not involved in them but but this is one ryan that i could tell you that you know, not if, when, I'll say when, buddy, not, not if it hits, you know, not if it hits, when it hits, um, we'll be one of those needle movers, right? You know, um, um, IMDB was bought by who? Amazon bought them, correct? And, you know, bought them in Amazon, I think in, in 98 for like $50 million. Uh, and now, you know, how many years later, it's worth, I think, almost uh, $3 billion. Yeah, that's, see, that's it's ridiculous. Like that. It's insane. And, and that? And that's the thing with a lot of these technology companies, too, guys, that is for, for our audience in, in general. You, you, you build that basis. You build that fundamental, uh, the fundamentals of it. And, and the Googles, the Amazons, the metas of the world could come in and do so much with that information because they could cross it through all these yep. different um, you know, verticals that, that they have to do. And it's just super, super amounts of gasoline being put on a fire that, that was already started by the founder. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then listen, there's so much data too to collect. It's, it's pretty wild in the sense of like, you know, right now we have NFL, MLB, MLS, and NBA. We're adding NHL now, but we'll, we'll have up to 40 sports, right? If you get paid to do it, we'll have it. And then our big thing for us is we'll go historical. So you'll be able to see, you know, like, uh, Steve Young, you know, he's a big investor too. Now you can see everything he's investing in and Joe Montana has got a fund that he's investing in a bunch of fun stuff and all the way back to Babe Ruth and just what he was involved in as well. Um, and, and again, it's like a, it's like an IMDb meets a Wikipedia, except 
<laughs> will be verified where Wikipedia is crowdsourced. You know, so anyone can put anything. I was it's a funny story. I, I I was filming a movie in Utah, a Hallmark movie. And of course. uh <laughs> yeah, of course. A Hallmark, a Hallmark, a Hallmark Christmas movie? <laughs> yes, it was, of course. Uh this last one that came out on Thanksgiving was my fifth one, so it's it's been going great. And they're fun. But um Awesome. What's the one that'll be this this Christmas season? It premiered on Thanksgiving night. Uh it was called My Southern Family Christmas. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, and they didn't make what? they didn't make the mistake on this one. Like when I showed up to set in Utah, I my stand in was five five eight. Okay. And the stand in comes in and what they essentially do is they stand on your mark so they can light where you're gonna be and put the okay. camera and lighting and they do that so I don't have to stand there for the, the hour or the thirty minutes that they do that for. So, and then but I walk in and I'm six two, six one. And I'm like, and I had to readjust all the lighting because they light lit it for a five eight guy. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, well, your Wikipedia says you're five eight. I'm like, guys, that's why there's IMDb. That's why you call me. I'll tell you, it's it's anyone can put anything on there. I was just so astounded that they went to Wikipedia, and that's what we're trying to help solve. Like, you know, not be, not having to go to Wikipedia to tell you that the the Yankees won the you know the 2021 World Series and they didn't. You know, yeah, um, yeah. And, and listeners everywhere right now are running to start their own Wikipedia page and seeing if they could get their own shit approved, making up stuff. We're all six foot yeah. six now. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that was funny. a fun, that was a fun Hallmark moment. And then, yeah, the other one is actually a pretty good movie about reason like this one is it's a love story, but it's not like the usual Hallmark love story. It's more of like a, a re- reconnecting of a family, okay. um, which is really cool. And then our love story is kind of on the, the back burner of it. Um, but you know, we watched it at my house and girls crying. My mom's crying. Everyone's crying. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a really sweet Christmas story and it's all like set in Baton Rouge. So it's like the, the Southern Louisiana Christmas. And instead of having Santa Claus, they have a Père Noël. Um, you learn a lot of cool tr- traditions that I didn't even know existed as, you know, this alligators, Santa hats instead of reindeer. It's pretty funny. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Well, hey, I want to touch on something else, man. First of all, I'm also going to mention, Ryan, you know, you're super well connected in, in LA. And, and one of the things I've noticed about you, about you, Ryan, is once people like enter your circle, you, you're not shy about connecting the dots. And hey, do you know this person? Do you know that person? I, I, I feel mm-hmm. like... I feel like um, you got to get to a certain level of you know trust that, uh, on your end be- before you do that. But but a lot of people just aren't like that, and and I, I'd encourage the audience really to think about that. You know, do you have people that are close to you that you trust, knowing that they may be able to help somebody else that's kind of close to you too that you also trust? Why why aren't you going out of your way to connect those two? Some people just don't think like that 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 doesn't cross their mind where it feels like ryan has his head on the swivel on a swivel to do all that one of the people in those circles the aforementioned circle someone you brought up earlier okay nate Nate raby um Mm -hmm. he has a uh he works for roth capital and has a venture capital um fund of his own called rx3 it's uh aaron Rodgers, nate raby and um roth of roth okay roth yeah. Is it Byron? Byron Ross. Ross. Yeah. Like, Happy birthday, Byron. Pick, pick her off. <laughs> Happy birthday. Um, it was just his it was his sixtieth birthday on Saturday. So let me ask you this, Ryan. It is you know, we, we know what Aaron does for you, right? Aaron, this idea you have is gonna be hard to make fly without someone of Aaron Rodgers' caliber on, on, on that side of the table with you, in my opinion. Um and and, mm-hmm. and he's there and this could only be it could only be a great thing. Um how about Nate being involved? You know. People know him. People know him throughout California, especially Orange County, as an astute business guy. People respect him. Is is his involvement something that gives you additional credibility on top of Aaron's when you're talking to, I don't know, investors or other partners? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like he's so business savvy and and knows that world, right? Like Aaron, obviously, he, he helps out a lot and gives a lot of great insight into how the website should be built you know, what athletes would want on it and look for, mm-hmm. um, design. And then, you know, I studied business at school and I, do, I have a very business savvy mind where I can come in and connect dots and, and make things happen. And then, but talking to investors and it, there, there's just this, I know what I know what I know what I don't. And there's a, you know, a disconnect there for, for me of, from a running a business to having that, that dialogue with an investor, as far as, you know, learning a lot of like, 
performas, building performas, yeah. uh, yeah. you know, evalu- evaluations, yeah. uh, right. safe agreements as opposed to convertible notes, like that kind of stuff. And that's yeah. where Nate really, you know, comes in. And like even when you and I were chatting, right, like there's a certain time I was like, I need to bring Nate into this conversation because yep. he can explain yep. at a higher level, you know, why the safe and the 20% discount and da 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 is good for you. Yeah. Um, right. the investor and, and, you know, those terms that I just, I didn't know yeah. at the time I do now, I'm, you know, I've studied and learned a lot from Nate, but you know, he's, he's the closer I'll get, you know, I've got the idea around the business. He's the closer for the, for the investment and having him around has taught me a lot and to know what to say, what I not to say. Um, and, and two, just, you know, we, we talk every day and yep. I yep. can, he's someone, he's someone I can really call and, and bounce ideas or thoughts off of. And, um, it's, he's been a, he's been a true asset. And but again, it's, it's a huge learning curve and he's been great at helping me. And Nate has agreed to be on the show. We haven't filmed it yet, but he'll be on the show at, at some point. He's def- definitely a smart dude. And you know, it's funny, Ryan, <laughs> if you, if you recall, I got involved with OSDB and as we were still like figuring out the paperwork, boom, COVID hit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never yeah. forget it. I was on spring break with my kids in Cabo and uh, I'm talking to you and I'm like, dude, I think I'm just going to stay here. They started shutting down everything in the United States, but Cabo was shutting things down. But like, you know, there was no cases. And then there was cases all over LA and Chicago. So people are like, yep. you asshole, why are you staying in Cabo posting pictures with your damn kids in the pool? I go, <laughs> no one's here and there's no cases. Why would I get on a plane and fly back to freaking Chicago? Anyway, uh, I digress. Sorry. During that time, <laughs> I was, during that time, I was going back and forth with, with you and Nate. Um, yep. And it was just kind of, a, it was just a funny time, man. It was a funny time because it's like, uh shit is like the world ending here right we had no idea and and two it was like you were like i and kudos to you and i you know i've always been so thankful for you you're our first investor yeah. outside of you know our yeah. initial founders of me aaron and nate um yeah. but i remember we were talking like we got money in we were starting to get moving and then that happened and we're just like oh shit just like you know yeah most everyone but for me it was my first business and i was like oh shit you know like <laughs> You know, thankfully, it was a time where we could just build data, right? And everyone could sit at home and we were building data and just collecting it and, you know, and waiting to start raising again. Um, but yeah, that was, I mean, like it was for everyone a scary time. But you and I were just chatting of like, what do we do now? Like, you know, which, how should we make this? What can we do best with this money at the moment? Well, and, and I was kind of, you know, four months earlier, I was still working in insurance, right? So I was just new to this space. And, you know, I was a happy dude anyways. I'm freaking hanging out with Ryan Rotman and Zach Efron in L.A. Look at me. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm kidding. But 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 here, here's the thing, though, that was serious for me that I want to pass along to the audience. As an angel investor, or if you're going to try to be more formal about it and be an early stage venture capitalist, nothing ever freaking happens as fast as you think it's going to happen. Okay. Whether it's COVID coming out of a clear blue sky that slows all the fundraising down or more recently, money's not free anymore. It's not cheap anymore. Interest rates are up. Go talk to some founders that are raising money right now and ask them about that environment versus four months ago. And, um, you know, here's here's one of them. Yeah. 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 You know, it's funny. It's like it's almost like it's almost like entertainment, where the you know big thing for us is in, even raising. It's like hurry up and wait, right? It's just like hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, and then like okay, wait, we'll, we'll need, wait thirty more minutes, and then uh, you know, <laughs> in the acting world, I always say they they pay me to wait, and I act for yep. free. And it's almost <laughs> got it. You know, it's it's same with raising. It's just like you know, I always say too that for every you know maybe I, I'll have a yes. After yep. 50 no's. So every no that I have, I get more excited because it's one closer to that Ooh, yes. That that dude, that is a great analogy, man. I, I That's funny because, okay, I tried to get my daughter when she was like in second grade into acting and I couldn't freaking take sitting in these lines waiting for commercial auditions for like the Wisconsin that's Dells right. and shit. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm trying to vote for a freaking Wisconsin Dells commercial and it's like 200 people are here and we're sitting there for six hours. Anyway, I'm like, you know what, honey, you're not acting. Sorry. Same thing. You got to do it a hundred times to get that one. Yes. Same thing with fundraising. I love that analogy. Yep. I don't know. I, don't, I can't believe I haven't thought of that before. Pretty, pretty. Well, it just it, it just makes you appreciate every no a little bit more, right? Where it's like, yeah, if you know in ten or twenty or fifty that that yes is coming, it's just one more down until you get there. 
eventually you'll get one. Just how long or how much are you willing to wait and how much are you willing to put into it? Well, now you're going after the bigger checks too, right? Like, like for, well, yeah, we probably don't want to get too specific, but, but you're looking for potentially institutional money now and, and funds, th- things of that nature. Whereas, whereas before in those, you know, pre-seed types of rounds, you know, smaller check sizes, you, you, you probably also had the ability, Ryan, I don't know if you want to touch on it or not, just because of your stature, because of the idea behind this company, because of the people in your network, duh, because Aaron's involved, you know, you, you, you had the ability to be a little bit selective about how many people you want on that cap table. You, you, you weren't taking every dollar being thrown in your direction, I would imagine. You know, Aaron said everyone's got to put money in, right? We're not giving away anything. It's, uh, you know, he put his money where his mouth was. And if you believe in the idea, put the money in. And, you know, we weren't taking really that small of checks. I, I have found it's easier to raise large amounts of money than smaller amounts of money, <laughs> it's, which is so strange. But if you know, yeah. like, we'll do, we'll be doing a bigger raise here, and we already have people like committed to that at bigger amounts. But like the smaller amounts for them, it's just like, yeah, well, I'll just wait. And yep. it's it's yep. it's so funny. Uh, that was something that really struck me as as not expected. Yeah, I had a friend of a friend send me an email the other day with a with a pitch deck, and it was this, this very you know they don't even have uh, an MVP or anything yet, but they're really raising like twenty five grand, not not minimum twenty five grand. They're raising like twenty five grand total. Total. And I'm looking, yeah, and I'm looking at it like, okay, what what are you looking for check sizes? Five grand, and you know whatever. God God bless, and they're hopefully it works out for them or whatever, but. I had more questions because they were only raising 25 grand. Yeah. You know, if they would have told me the reason 500 grand, I would have had less questions. I'm like, okay, well, you know, how, how are you going to do anything with this money? So I, I think there's a, you know, there's some truth to what you just, just said there. I need just additional notoriety that you want to share or have with OSDB. You know, it's, it's such a good concept. And, and I feel like Aaron doesn't need to be a part of it, but it just makes it that much more visible that he is. You know what I mean? You're probably getting checks now from people that, hey, dude, they're not even Packers fans. You know, early on, people are saying, yeah, Aaron, yeah. sign my autograph if I participate, probably. Now it's like, oh, yeah. he's even involved. You know what I mean? Again, he's such a smart guy, and he's so uh, business savvy and stuff. But a big thing for him was, and, and I commend him on this, was he wanted this to be, you know, its own entity. This, he didn't want this to be Aaron Rodgers' website. Gotcha. He said, "This this should be able to work without me attached to it, right? Because it's a it is a good idea. It's something that he feels is needed in the the sports market. Um, yep. Everything else is kind of antiquated, or you know, it's hard to process and doesn't have a good look, and um, doesn't have all of it in one place. So he said, this is something that without me involved should be, you know, a home run. So as much as you know." His name is, he's a founder, right? he's my co founder. So, as much as he is part of that, like he's not going out screaming it from the rooftops because he again wants this to be uh, its own thing and not the Aaron Rodgers thing. And when, you know, right now we're, we're like 150, 200,000 unique users a month. Um, so, we're, we're building that uh, fan base and people coming and using us. And once we, you know, we, become an actual huge business is like he'll be like okay you did it you did it without me having to stream it let's go right. you know what i mean so yeah. he's i commend him yeah. on on that and you know he wants to be he wants it to be a winner and um yeah. and yeah. of its own volition and not because of him and i really i really like that yeah no that's cool and and i think there th- there's a lot of validation to um with some of the people that you've gotten involved as investors a, a lot of people don't realize this not everybody in la that you've seen in a movie is like driving a rolls royce and a multimillionaire. okay there's like ryan just described you know you, you're hustling out there for, for for the work and there's some like names out there that, that you'd know that doesn't necessarily mean that they have a hundred grand to be thrown in every friend's uh you know venture capital project um, yeah. I know, I know some people that are, I don't think it's public. So I'm like I say, but I, but I know that there's some people that, that have joined, um, that cap capitalization table here at, here at OSDB. And to me, Ryan, I don't think I've ever said this to you, but I, I think that's validation because those celebrity LA types. Okay. They see the importance of IMDB. They know how important IMDB is to their culture. 
oh shit, sports does need this. You know what I mean? Yep. Maybe maybe yep. all of sports doesn't know it yet, but they need this. So so those types of people writing checks to me is is as validating as anybody else writing them. No, I mean you hit it on the head. Like we have some really huge celebrities that have invested, and uh, and that's exactly what they said. They said, "Listen, I know what IMDb has done for me as an actor on the producing side, all that kind of stuff, and how it was needed in the entertainment industry. You know, it's been that go to for years and years and years." Yeah. Everyone just one of the first things they say is, "I can't believe it doesn't already exist." Like, how is there not already a website like this? And that was their first words of like, yep. "This doesn't exist." And I was like, "If it did, you know about it." And like, yep. you're right. And there's huge yep. sports fans, and and uh, you know, thankfully they use it all the time. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, hey man, listen, this was great. I want to. We end the show. You know, I, well, I know Ryan. You've been watching every episode, so you know how I'm gonna end the show, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna yep. put you on the spot to make sure you have to answer that, but I'll I'll, I'll lean into it here for you. <laughs> it doesn't have to be business related. Doesn't have to be sports related. Ryan, recommend a movie for our audience. Ryan Rotman recommends what? Uh, a big Lebowski. <laughs> and I say that, I, I say that it was, it was one of my favorite movies. And that's one of the first things that Aaron and I bonded over was the big Lebowski. We're both huge fans of that movie. Uh, <laughs> and if you haven't seen it, I mean, it's a classic, uh, I'd say that. And then because of the, because of the year, the time of year, Christmas vacation. Dude, I love Christmas vacation. Dude, they, they, here's yeah. what's so funny. You just made a reference to Aaron there. I'll share this story real quick. Me and Ryan are going to this party in Bel Air, and Aaron Aaron was going to be at it. I'm, he comes to my con- Ryan comes to my condo beforehand. I didn't have a car out there yet, and uh, I'm getting dressed. I'm still wearing the shit I wore like working out earlier when he gets over. <laughs> I'm wearing a t-shirt of a guy like smoking a brisket, and it said, "Yeah, smoke brisket, not meth." And, and I go, should I just wear that? <laughs> I <remember> that. <laughs> and I go, should I just wear this? I'm totally kidding. We're going to like this guy's $50 million mansion. And uh, Ryan goes, dude, honestly, Aaron's going to love you if you wear that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we're at this, like like you said, $50 million mansion, Bel Air, yeah. with all these yeah. like business types. And the few of it, like, yeah. you know, we all just roll up in like t-shirts and stuff. Like, that's just how we are. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he, he I, don't wear that, money, yeah. I don't wear that. I wore a t-shirt, but I don't wear that t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Ryan. We really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me. And that wraps up another episode of 2000% Raise. Thank you for listening. The best way to support our show is by leaving a rating or review on all platforms you listened on. And of course, by following, liking, or subscribing. Visit us at 2000%Raise.com or at John Sarasani on TikTok and Instagram. And of course, my YouTube channel at John Sarasani's 2000% Raves. Find all the ways to follow today's guests in our show notes. Thank you for being a part of our entrepreneurial journey.